The skies of future conflicts are set to be redrawn, not by a single revolutionary aircraft, but by a symphony of interconnected systems orchestrated by human pilots. At the heart of this paradigm shift is the U.S. Air Force's Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program, an ambitious and strategically vital initiative poised to redefine the very nature of aerial warfare. The core concept is both simple and profound, enabling human pilots to command formations of semi-autonomous and autonomous drones, thereby dramatically augmenting their capabilities, extending their operational reach, and multiplying their combat effectiveness. This initiative, a cornerstone of the broader Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD family of systems, has ignited a fierce competition among the titans of the defense industry and innovative newcomers alike, each vying to build the robotic wingmen that will dominate the 21st century battle space. The stakes are immense, representing not just multi-billion dollar contracts, but the chance to shape the future of military aviation for generations. The CCA program is not merely about developing unmanned drones, it is about fundamentally re-architecting air power. It represents a move away from the decades-long pursuit of ever more exquisite, costly, and complex single platforms toward a distributed, networked, and more resilient force structure. Companies like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, General Atomics, Northrop Grumman, and the disruptive startup Anduril are deep in the development of unique designs and operational concepts. These cutting-edge prototypes reflect a diverse spectrum of tactical philosophies. Some are engineered as miniature stealth bombers, emphasizing low observability and precision strike capabilities to penetrate contested airspace. Others prioritize raw speed for rapid interception and engagement, while many are being equipped with sophisticated sensor arrays to act as the forward eyes and ears of the fleet, identifying threats long before a manned aircraft is in range. A crucial aspect of this new doctrine is the concept of swarming, allowing for coordinated, multi-axis attacks from dozens of platforms simultaneously, designed to overwhelm and saturate even the most advanced enemy air defense systems. While development is progressing at a remarkable pace, with several prototypes already undergoing rigorous flight tests to validate performance and reliability, a veil of secrecy shrouds many of the specific technical specifications and operational capabilities. This secrecy is essential for maintaining a strategic edge in an increasingly competitive global environment. This video delves into the multifaceted intricacies of the CCA program, exploring the Air Force's requirements, the strengths and innovations of the leading competitors, the historical context that paved the way for this initiative, and its profound implications for the future of global air superiority. bring to the future of warfare. Air dominance is not a birthright. That you could assign that aircraft. Hey, there's an adversary out there. Perform an intercept on that adversary. The CCA program does not exist in a vacuum. It is a critical component of the much larger Next Generation Air Dominance Initiative, a comprehensive effort to ensure American air supremacy for decades to come. NGAD is not a single new stealth fighter. It is a family of systems encompassing manned jets, a variety of unmanned drones, advanced sensors, and long-range weapons, all networked to operate as a single cohesive force. This represents a strategic departure from the 20th century model of focusing on increasingly expensive and complex manned platforms like the F-22 and F-35. The new emphasis is on revolutionizing how air power is employed, creating a resilient, distributed, and lethal network that is greater than the sum of its parts. By distributing capabilities across numerous platforms, the loss of any single node does not cripple the mission, presenting a far more complex challenge for an adversary to counter. While the Air Force is spearheading this vision, it is a collaborative effort. The Navy, which boasts the world's second largest Air Force, and the Marine Corps have their own parallel CCA programs. A key goal is interoperability, with the Navy and Air Force planning to share interchangeable drones, creating a common pool of assets that can be deployed from land or sea maximizing flexibility and logistical efficiency. This commonality aims to reduce development costs, streamline supply chains, and allow for joint operations where an Air Force fighter could potentially control Navy drones or vice versa, creating a truly unified combat capability. Within this framework, CCA drones are the force multipliers. 
The Air Force envisions these uncrewed aircraft flying alongside, or more critically, ahead of manned jets like the F-35 and a future NGAD fighter, unofficially designated Boeing F-47. They are designed to undertake the most dangerous tasks, penetrating dense air defenses to neutralize threats, engaging in air-to-air -air combat as weapons mules carrying extra missiles, conducting persistent electronic warfare, gathering intelligence in high threat zones, and executing autonomous strike missions. This operational concept extends beyond fighter escort. CCAs can be teamed with high-value assets like cargo aircraft, AWACS early warning planes, and refueling tankers, providing a defensive screen that would otherwise require dedicated fighter patrols, freeing up manned assets for more critical offensive missions. A foundational principle of the CCA strategy is the concept of attritability. The Air Force is deliberately seeking drones that are inexpensive enough that their loss in combat, while not desirable, is not a strategic catastrophe. While not as cheap as disposable munitions, the strategic calculus is clear. Losing dozens of CCA drones is vastly preferable to losing a single F-35 and its human pilot. This approach allows the Air Force to generate mass, deploying enough air power to overwhelm enemy defenses without incurring unacceptable risks to its pilots or bankrupting the Pentagon with prohibitively expensive platforms. The objective is to field over a thousand CCA drones to support a fleet of approximately 300 manned fighters, creating a potential ratio of two or three robotic wingmen for every human pilot, with the flexibility to surge even more into a contested area, creating a temporary localized numerical superiority that can be decisive. The race to build these revolutionary aircraft has drawn a diverse field of competitors, each bringing a unique philosophy and technological approach to the table. No discussion of the CCA program is complete without acknowledging the pioneering work of Kratos Defense. Their experimental XQ-58 Valkyrie, which first flew in 2019 under an Air Force program often called Loyal Wingmen, was a proof of concept that directly influenced the entire CCA initiative. The Valkyrie demonstrated that a company could field a low-cost, high-performance, semi-autonomous jet drone using advanced, cost-effective manufacturing techniques. Crucially, it did not require a runway, capable of being launched by a catapult system, vastly increasing its operational flexibility from forward or austere locations. Kratos proved that smaller, more agile firms could iterate quickly and build a credible platform without billion-dollar budgets and decade-long procurement cycles. While Kratos is not a prime contractor in the current phase, the Valkyrie's legacy lives on, having been acquired, evolved, and rebranded by another key competitor. Lockheed Martin's legendary Skunk Works division, responsible for iconic aircraft like the U-2 and F-117, unveiled its CCA contender named Vectis in September 2025. Early renderings showcase a design that is pure Skunk Works, a sleek, tailless, blended wing body with internal weapons bays and all the hallmarks of advanced stealth technology. Lockheed is focusing on survivability, sophisticated autonomy, and advanced sensor fusion, designing Vectis to operate in the most heavily defended environments as a penetrating sensor and strike asset. It is expected to fly alongside not only the F-35, but also the forthcoming NGAD manned fighter. Given Skunk Works' reputation for producing exquisite, high-performance systems, it is highly probable that Vectis will be an incredibly capable but also expensive platform, less of an attritable wingman and more of a high-end, survivable robotic asset not intended for one-way missions. This suggests a potential tiered approach where a few high-value CCAs like Vectis lead a larger swarm of more attritable drones. General Atomics, the modular family approach. General Atomics, the company behind the groundbreaking MQ-9 Reaper, is leveraging its extensive experience in unmanned systems to build an entire family of CCA drones under its Gambit program. Their approach is novel, mirroring the modern automotive industry by building multiple variants off a common core chassis to save development and production costs, while also simplifying logistics and training for the end user. The Gambit family currently includes four planned variants. Gambit 1 for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Gambit 2 for air-to-air -air combat, likely carrying a large missile payload. Gambit 3 as an advanced trainer. And Gambit 4, a striking design that resembles a miniaturized B-21 Raider stealth bomber intended for penetrating strike missions. Leading their charge in the official competition is the YFQ-42A. 
General Atomics was awarded a contract to build this prototype in April 2024 and conducted its first test flight just 16 months later, a rapid timeline enabled by its work on the earlier XQ-67A drone developed for the Air Force's off-board sensing station program. The company emphasizes that this is a clean sheet design, purpose-built for the CCA mission and not a mere evolution of the Reaper. In direct competition with General Atomic's prototype is the YFQ-44A Fury, the other design awarded a prototype contract. This aircraft is the direct descendant of the Kratos XQ-58 Valkyrie. The innovative defense startup Indoral Astriel acquired the design and has since spent considerable effort overhauling its software, integrating its proprietary AI backbone, and connecting it to its Lattice OS command and control platform. Andoral's core pitch is not just about the drone's speed in the air, but the speed of its development and manufacturing, leveraging modern software development practices and advanced manufacturing to rapidly scale production. They aim to build drones faster, cheaper, and with more flexible autonomy than anyone else. This positions the Fury as the leading candidate for the attritable aspect of the CCA vision, allowing the Air Force to procure large numbers of drones quickly and affordably for use in swarms or on high-risk missions where losses are anticipated. Boeing brings a unique advantage to the competition with its MQ-28 Ghost Bat. Originally developed in partnership with the Australian Air Force, the Ghost Bat is the only drone in the competition that is already a mature platform, having flown operational test missions with a partner nation. Its standout feature is a modular nose cone that can be swapped out in the field in a matter of hours to configure the aircraft for different missions, be it with advanced sensors, electronic warfare gear, or targeting systems. Boeing highlights that the Ghost Bat is semi-autonomous and mature enough for international export, its potential weakness may lie in its survivability. As a slightly older design, its stealth characteristics may not match those of clean sheet designs like Vectis. However, the fact that it is a proven, flying, and exportable system gives it a significant advantage in terms of risk reduction and speed to fielding, making it a lower risk option for the Air Force. The most enigmatic competitor has been Northrop Grumman. The company has remained largely silent, but images of its prototype, dubbed the Model 47, surfaced in 2024, revealing a startling feature, a cockpit for a human pilot. Analysts speculate this is a clever developmental strategy. With a human pilot on board, Northrop Grumman can conduct flight tests in a wider range of airspace where purely unmanned aircraft are restricted. This allows them to accumulate flight hours and test the aircraft's aerodynamic performance more rapidly than competitors. This does not mean the final version will be manned. Instead, it points towards a highly flexible, optionally manned platform. The Air Force could choose to fly it with a pilot for certain missions or send it off unmanned as a CCA. This concept of converting manned platforms to unmanned ones is already being explored in programs like Venom, which is turning retired F-16s into autonomy test beds. This level of flexibility could be a decisive selling point for Northrop Grumman's mysterious entry, offering a single airframe that could fulfill multiple roles, from training to frontline combat. As the Air Force moves from the current Increment 1 phase towards Increment 2, with plans to award concept refinement contracts in early 2026, significant hurdles remain. The goal to field operational CCAs by 2028 is incredibly aggressive for a defense acquisition program of this complexity, demanding parallel progress in technology, manufacturing, and doctrine. The most significant challenge lies in the realm of autonomy and trust. How do you grant a drone lethal authority while ensuring meaningful human control and adherence to complex rules of engagement? How can the software be made robust enough to prevent fratricide, blue-on-blue -blue incidents, in the chaos of battle? And how can you guarantee the AI will behave as intended when an adversary is actively trying to jam its communications, spoof its sensors, or mislead it with sophisticated cyber attacks. A compromised CCA could potentially be turned into a weapon against friendly forces. These are not just technical questions, but profound ethical and doctrinal ones that must be answered through rigorous testing and simulation before these systems can be fielded responsibly. If the Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program succeeds, it will fundamentally change how the United States and its allies fight and win wars in the air. 
the lone fighter jet streaking through the sky will be replaced by a lethal team of man and machine, fundamentally altering the calculus of air power. Imagine a future sortie. A single F-35 pilot acting as a mission commander penetrates enemy airspace while orchestrating a team of robotic wingmen. One CCA is out front, jamming enemy radars and collecting electronic intelligence. Another is scouting ahead, using its advanced sensors to find and identify targets, passing that data back to the entire network. A third is laden with air-to-air -air missiles to engage enemy fighters at range, while a fourth carries precision bombs to eliminate ground-based threats that have been identified by its counterparts. The pilot is no longer just a pilot, but a battlefield manager. The human pilot remains the decision maker, the puppet master overseeing the autonomous systems, freed from the cognitive load of flying the aircraft to focus on the broader strategic picture. These drones, communicating with each other and their human lead, can be launched from austere forward bases without extensive support infrastructure. If one is shot down, it is a tactical loss, not a national tragedy no rescue mission is required. While it may look less like Top Gun and more like science fiction, the state of play is clear. Whether Lockheed Martin's stealth, General Atomic's modularity, Anderil's speed, Boeing's maturity, or Northrop Grumman's flexibility wins out, or more likely a combination of several to create a tiered and multifaceted force, the one certainty is that the future of air combat has arrived and it will be collaborative. Enjoyed the episode? Like and subscribe to Military Forces. For more in-depth content, your support helps us create more.